Shalom, and welcome to another episode of GMS Prophecy Soup. All praises to Yahweh Ba Shemi Haushai, double honors to the elders of GMS. The title of this video is What You Did Not Know About the Statue of Liberty. But before I go on, I'd like to read one scripture. This is Obadiah, the sixth verse. It says, How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? And the reason why this scripture is so powerful is because we are in a time of Esau's downfall. The reason because is Esau's power lies in his ability to deceive. That's his power, his deception and lies. And how do you take that power away? The way you take away his power is through truth. Now, where is the truth found? The truth is found in the Bible. So the Lord has been revealing to us all of Esau's secrets. And all of Esau's secrets have been contained, formulated, devised by his group, Secret Society, which is not a secret anymore, called the Illuminati. Now, the Illuminati derives all their powers from Satan. They study ancient civilizations and ancient kingdoms. Now, all ancient civilizations and ancient kingdoms they all use statues and symbols to worship and to pay homage to the sun. America is no different. Now, when people think of America, the first symbol that they think of is what? The Statue of Liberty. And the, the, the lie put out there is that the Statue of Liberty was a gift from the French government to the Americans in comm commemoration of the American Declaration of Independence, which is a total lie. The Statue of Liberty is actually a symbol, a secret symbol within the Masonic Brotherhood. The true meaning of the Statue of Liberty is known among them, but through the spread of Yahweh Bashimi Haushai, we're going to reveal that today. Now, a lot of you brothers are probably up on the Statue of Liberty, but a lot of you brothers may not be. So, Lord willing, this will open the eyes of a lot of you brothers out there. Now, the Statue of Liberty is actually a symbol to the Masonic world that America is controlled and known by the, by the Illuminati or the elites. The Illuminati is a secret society which was founded by Adam Weishaupt in 1776 which is the same in the year same year inscripted on the tablet that is being held by the statue of liberty now a lot of our own people so called negroes so called puerto ricans mexicans they worship the statue of liberty they worship the declaration of independence 4th of july watching the fireworks you know they hop on a ferry go to the Statue of Liberty, take pictures. But these people have no idea. <laughs> they're totally clueless to what they're worshiping. First of all, they believe that the Statue of Liberty meant liberty for mankind. Well, how is that so? Because in 1776, the year inscribed on the Statue of Liberty, during that year, niggas were in slavery right here in America. They were picking cotton. So that shows you right there that right there that the Statue of Liberty could not possibly be celebrating the liberation of uh, the so-called Negro or the abolishment of slavery, which was in 1863 by Abraham Lincoln, which Abraham Lincoln himself was a Mason. Now, some information here that I gathered from a couple different sources. I'm going to scroll through and pick out. Um, the edifying material, so just bear with me. Now, it says here, many people mistakenly believe that the French government gave the Statue of Liberty to the American government, but it was individuals in the French Grand Oriental Temple of the Masons that built and presented the statue named Liberty Enlightening the World. Statue of Liberty was not the original name of that idol. The original name of it, when it was given to the American Masons, 
was liberty enlightening the world, which that phrase right there is a Masonic phrase. Because a liberty, which is enlightening the world, the liberty represents Satan. And the symbol of Satan is the sun. So it says liberty enlightening the world. What world is it talking about? Is it talking about the whole entire world? No, it's talking about the world of masonry, the brotherhood of masonry. See, the word world there is used as the world cosmos because the Masons, they know what the real meaning of the word world is. So when you, when you hear them use the word world or the people or we the people, they're not talking about the whole entire world. They're talking about within themselves, within that organization. Now let's jump to Job 9 and 24 to prove that. It says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? It says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So when they make statements like liberty enlightening the world, they're talking about themselves because they are the ones that control the world. So it says, uh, it was named Liberty Enlightening the World as a gift to the Masons of America in celebration of the Senate, uh, excuse me, centenary of the first Masonic Republic in 1884. Centenary represents a hundred years because the, uh, the Illuminati was founded in 1776. So 1884, when it was commissioned to be completed by, was a hundred year celebration. It says a Statue of Liberty in New York Harbor was presented in 1884 as a gift from the French Grand Orient Temple Masons to the Masons of America in celebration of cent uh, centenary of the Ma First Masonic Republic. Right, the First Masonic Republic was established in 1776 by Adam Weishaupt. It says she is holding the Masonic Torch of Enlightenment. Also referred to back in the 1700s by the Illuminati Masons as a flaming torch of reason. Now, when they, when it says here the 1700s, they're going back to 1776, um, when Adam Weishaupt founded the Illuminati because the flaming torch of reason was his own concept. As you'll see here, this is a quote directly from Adam Weishaupt. Now it says here, as I mentioned earlier, the Statue of Liberty's official title is Liberty Enlightening the World, which this name through the course of time was eventually changed to the Statue of Liberty. The cornerstone of the statue records how it was laid in a Masonic ceremony. Right, now if you look at the plaque of the Statue of Liberty, on the plaque inscribed, it actually says there that the dedication of the Statue of Liberty, when it was shipped over here and put together, was done through a Masonic ceremony. And it lists some names there of people that perform the ceremony, and these people are all Masons. As a matter of fact, the designer of the Statue of Liberty. His name is Bartholdi. He's a, he was a French sculptor. And the name of the man who engineered, you know, uh, measured out the pieces, the iron work, and the copper work. His name was Gustave Eiffel. As a matter of fact, the Eiffel Tower was built by the same man, which the Eiffel Tower is also a uh, cephalic symbol. That's also a symbol of masonry. Now, these two guys, a sculptor Bartholdi and Gustave um, Eiffel, they were both masons, which is no surprise. Now, so in 1884, when this thing was built, they had a masonic ceremony. Now, if you go to Ellis Island and Lord Willen, Myself and some other elders will get a chance to go there and do some filming. You go to Ellis Island is filled with nothing but Masonic symbols. And Ellis Island, what many people don't know, is actually Ellis Island actually used to be an internment camp, a concentration camp. 
that was the first stop that um, immigrants would have to stop through before being um, before gaining access into New York. Now, to get a little uh, glimpse of what this ceremony was like in 1886, I have here a video where in 1886, um, so-called President Ronald Reagan, after the, a two-year restoration of the Statue of Liberty, they had a cent, uh, centen, centennial uh, opening ceremony. And you can, I'm going to play the clip here and you can see how this whole, this ceremony is totally demonic. So watch this. And now we will unveil that gallant lady. Thank you and God bless you all. Nancy. Here's a quote I want to read by a best-selling author and Egyptologist named Robert Bovel. He said the cornerstone for the Statue of Liberty was placed in a solemn ceremony in 1884, organized by the Masonic Lodges of New York. The Statue of Liberty, which was designed by the French sculptor Bartholdi and actually built by the French engineer Gustave Eiffel, both well-known free, both well-known Freemasons, was not originally a Statue of Liberty at all, but first planned by Bartholdi for the opening of the Suez Canal in Egypt in 1864. Bartholdi, like many French Masons of his time, was deeply steeped in Egyptian rituals, and it has been often said that he conceived the original statue as an effigy of the goddess Isis and only later converted it to the to a Statue of Liberty for New York Harbor when it was rejected for the Suez Canal. Now, the Statue of Liberty still represents Isis, and it represents a number of other gods. Ishtar, they're all the same gods, but they go by different names. And what the sculptor did is... He took different elements from all the different gods because they evolved over time. The same god, but they changed names. And they may have evolved a little bit in image over time. And he put them all together. Because if you read, um, for example, you read Daniel, the second chapter. The feet that the image stood on represents America. And the reason that represents America is rep America represents the customs are still holds onto the customs and the idols of all the kingdoms before it. As I said, though, they just evolve over time. They change their look a little bit, but it's the same God. So the Statue of Liberty does represent Isis. And a note on that, it's interesting to note that on the tarot card called High Priestess, it displays the idol Isis in between two towers. And just as the Statue of Liberty was fixated between the two towers when they existed. Now, so the different, the different gods are Ishtar, Isis, Inanna, or Inanna, where the, uh, the term Nana comes from, or Il Nana. Um, Ashtar, 
which is the idol that King Solomon was worshiping. He was also worshiping uh, Molech, which I believe um, the scriptures say Milka. Another name for the Statue of Liberty is Juno and Diana Lucifera, which Diana Lucifera, when you see images of her, as you, you can see now, you can see her holding a torch. And Lucifera means light bearer. Now, if we go to Isaiah 14 and 12, what does it say? It says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Lucifer meaning what? Light bearer. Son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? So that's even further proof that Isaiah 14 and 12 is talking about the so-called white man and his Illuminati. Because they refer to themselves as the light bearers. Now, another Greek goddess, which is not well known, which I like to expose today, is a Greek goddess named Hecates. Now, Hecates, according to Wikipedia, she's said to be the guardian of the entranceways. So, it's no, uh, it's no hard thought that they would use Hecates, and you could see the crown around her head, that they would place her at the harbor of New York because she is guarding the entranceway to New York, to America. It says here she is variously, variously associated with crossroads, entranceways, fire, light, the moon, magic, witchcraft, knowledge of herbs and poisonous plants, necromancy, and sorcery. She has ruler over earth, sea, and sky, as well as more of a universal role as savior, mother of angels, and a cosmic world. So this is more proof that the so-called white man his kingdom is all based on witchcraft. Now, according to the scriptures, we're going to read Micah 5, 12 to 14. This is what the Lord said. The Lord said, And I will cut off witchcraft out of thine hands, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Thy graven images also would I cut off. The Statue of Liberty is one of them. And thy standing images out of the midst of thee. Is it not the Statue of Liberty a standing image? Representing Isis, Diana, Ashtoreth, Ishtar. So the Lord said he's going to cut them off. And thy standing images out of the midst of thee. And thou shalt have no more worship the work of thine hands. And I will cl pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee. So I, so will I destroy thy cities. And how's the Lord going to do that? Through nuclear fire. So with that, I hope you brothers learned something. And I'm going to say shalom and Lord's will next time. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Barakathum. Shalom.